गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स सेक्शन 314 ऑफ द कंपनी सैट कंटेंट दी प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू ऑफिस और प्लेस ऑफ प्रॉफिट आई बी कॉलिंग इट एस ओपीपी ऑफिस और प्लेस ऑफ प्रॉफिट वॉट डू यू मीन बाई दिस वॉट इज मेन बाई ऑफिस और प्लेस ऑफ प्रॉफिट जस्ट लिसन हियर बिफोर गोइंग इन टू दिस ऑफिस और प्लेस ऑफ प्रॉफिट और टू इट्स इंट्रिकसीज we will understand what is the need for this provision office or place of profit what is the need what is the rationale for this opp let us take mr x is a managing director of a company mr x is the managing director of abc limited mr x he has four achievements in his life son one son two son three daughter one so these are the four achievements of mr x during his lifetime mr x he is a very very highly educated person so he is a very very wealthy person so thereby mr 10th sorry mr s1 he is a 10th dropout yes to 11th dropout yes 3 12th dropout daughter had the highest qualification among all these persons she was college dropout so now this is the educational qualification of all these four persons son one son two son three and daughter one mr x he was thinking what to do with these children useless children what to do thereby what immediately mr x what he did he appointed mr s yes one as the accounts manager appointed mr x y s1 as the accounts manager monthly remuneration is 70000 per month yes2 was appointed as human resource manager remuneration was rupees 80000 per month yes3 was appointed as production manager remuneration was rupees 1 lakh per month and daughter she was appointed as marketing manager remuneration is rupees 2 lakhs per month is this possible is it possible to for mr x to do this or this is not possible very much possible for appointing an employee i need not get the consent of the board of directors i need not get the consent of the shareholders nothing is required i am the managing director i have the substantial powers of management very much possible tell me whether mr x is bound to do this or he is capable of doing this he is prone to do this yes he is very much prone to do this which means now when you look into this particular scenario for highly uneducated persons how highly unfit persons they are appointed in responsible positions in the company resulting in outflow of resources from the company what type of outflow this is unnecessary outflow of resources from the company thereby now what happens there is unnecessary siphoning of funds out of the company so there is an unnecessary siphoning of funds out of the company so now what is that we need to understand we don't want to entertain this we want to disentertain this of course you may be asking a question sir accounting standard number 18 which deals with related party disclosures so once you make payment to all these persons then it should be disclosed in related party disclosures all those things only at the end of the financial year till then for the entire financial year all these amounts would have already gone to these persons they would have already spent all these amount eh? all those things only at the end of the financial year apo now tell me we need some mechanism to control all these activities we need some mechanism where any director or any person related to director he is holding some position in the company and he is getting some remuneration from the company we need some regulation we need some control for that control we have this section 340 of the company act office or place of profit i can give you another illustration now we all know if this be the case then it becomes a big problem 
Mr. X also knows this. So Mr. X, the managing director, what he does? This company ABC Limited, it is having a subsidiary, PQR Limited. It is having a subsidiary PQR Limited. So now what this Mr. X is doing, what this managing director is doing, he is not taking his children, he is not taking his children into the employment of ABC Limited. Rather what he is giving, he is giving a direction to PQR Limited. Array appoint my son 1, son 2, son 3 and son 4, sorry daughter 1 in the employment in your particular company. So now what happens, what this person was not able to do directly, now this person is trying to do this indirectly by controlling his subsidiary, he is saying that come on appoint these persons in these particular places. So again we want to curb all these things, we don't want to entertain all these things, the provisions relating to office or place of profit comes into existence. Am I making myself clear? Come on friends. Right. Now, another possibility. Let us take Hindustan Unilever Limited is there. Hindustan Unilever Limited is there. Now this Hindustan Unilever Limited, it is going for its expansion of agents. It is going for expansion of its retailers, it is going for expansion of its agents. So in South India alone, it is appointing some 400 agents. The intention is to appoint some 400 agents in South India alone. So now what happens? This managing director of the company, he is not convinced with the remuneration he is getting from the company. He wants to earn some additional profit. So now what this managing director of the company does? The managing director, out of this 200, 400 agencies, the managing director takes 200 agencies. 200 agencies, they are taken over by the managing director. Managing director, he has paid some amount to the company and he takes over this 200 agencies. So, which means now what happened? A person who is in the control of the company, he tries to derive some unfair advantage of the company or at least if this transaction comes to the public at a future date, it may appear to the public that this person is trying to take an unfair advantage using his position. So now we don't want to entertain all these things, we would like to regulate all these things rather than restricting all these things. So section 314 of the Companies Act which contains the provisions relating to office or place of profit is not a provision restricting you to do something, it is a provision regulating you to do something. It says that you can do this but you comply with all these conditions, once you are done with these conditions you can do this. So this is in essence the need for section 314 of the Companies Act. So now what we are going to do? We are going to see how are we going to discuss this section 314 of the Companies Act. Right, anyways. <coughs> now, we are going to have four phases of discussion in this section 314. Four phases of discussion in this section 314. Phase number one is, we will understand what is meant by meaning and what is the definition of OPP given under the Act. So what is the definition of OPP, what is the meaning of OPP, what is the general meaning, what is the definition which is given under the Act. Next area is, where a person is to be appointed in OPP with the shareholders approval. Where a person is going to be appointed in OPP with shareholders approval. Next is, where a person is going to be appointed in OPP with the shareholders approval as well as with the central government approval. Under what circumstances you should appoint a person to OPP and shareholders approval as well as central government approval? The other is a miscellaneous phase. Some small, small things which is common for both these things will be discussed under this miscellaneous phase. So, four phases of discussion we are going to have in this OPP. One is office of place of profit, meaning 
the other is when shareholders approval is required the other is when shareholders approval as well as central government permission is required and then what are the miscellaneous factor so we will move into the section what is the meaning of office or place of profit now from a limited expression which i gave you can you tell me what is the meaning of office or place of profit when you can say that there is an office or place of profit as she rightly pointed out whenever there is an employment there is an office or place of profit some other circumstances where there is an office or place of profit come on from the various illustrations i gave to you you can ascertain some other circumstances appointed as appointed in any relationship he is appointed in any capacity yeah madam you had something to say so for the benefit of the relative see if a person is appointed in some position you call it as an office or place of profit friends you need to understand then i could have used the term office of profit or i could have used the term office of employment what is the need for using the term what is the significance of using the term office or place of profit i am using two different terms here one is an office of profit the other is a place of profit what is the distinction or is it just a redundancy extra to just clarify things they have given it extra subsidiary so when somebody is in the subsidiary you call it as a place of profit so different uh, entity though by you call it as a place of profit yeah somebody else if something is related to the profits then you will call it as a place of profit to a limited extent we can take this two terms which are used are one is office of profit the other is a place of profit when i say office of profit it means the employment so where a director or a person connected to the director is employed in the holding company or he is employed in the subsidiary company you call it as an office of profit but the next term which is used is place of profit what is this place of profit place of profit is nothing but any relationship other than this employer employee relationship but still that relationship is going to give some remuneration to this person connected to the director or to the director you call it as a place of profit so office represents the employment place of profit represents to any other relationship which gives some profit oh that is why two terminologies are used if you look into this illustration where the director is appointing in his any of his sons or daughters to the company you call this as an office of profit because they are taken into the employment of the company in this particular illustration where hql is going for an expansion and the managing director is taking 400 agents out of that he is taking 200 agencies now this is not an employer employee relationship this is a principal agent relationship but pursuant to this principal agent relationship the managing director is getting some remuneration he is getting some additional income thereby you call it as an place of profit so office represents employment place represents any other relationship which gives him some remuneration now this is the simple meaning of this office or place of profit where there is a relationship between the company where there is any relationship between the company and the director or person connected to the director what type of relationship is this this can either be an employer employee relationship it can either be an employer employee relationship or it can be any other relationship or it can be any other relationship and whereby because of this relationship this director or the person connected to the director they should act under the direction or supervision or control of the company so where there exists some relationship between these persons and pursuant to these relationships what happens this person connected to the director or director they should work under the direction supervision or control of the company 
So when the company is exercising direction, supervision or control over these persons, you call such position, you call such office as an office or place of profit. For example, if I am appointing an employee, can he exercise control over that employee? Come on friends. If I am appointing, if X Limited is appointing an employee, can X Limited exercise control over that employee? Obviously, obviously. Suppose if X Limited is appointing an agent, can X Limited exercise supervision over those agents? Can he exercise direction over those agents? A agent is bound to act as what a principal says, yes or not? So, office or place of profit means there should be some relationship. Owing to this relationship, pursuant to this relationship, the persons who are appointed, they should act as per the direction, supervision or control of the company. Now, let me give you a very small illustration. Let us take that there is a <coughs> company X Limited, it is manufacturing Puja articles. Re, puja means something spiritual, Puja is not the name of any girl. So Puja articles. So now what happens, X Limited is directed by managing director Mr. X. Now this managing director Mr. X, he is a managing director of the company and one of the relatives of Mr. X, he makes an offer to the company. One of the relatives of Mr. X, he makes an offer to the company. What offer he is making to the company? This relative of Mr. X, he is a doctor. So he tells to the company, I will provide services free of charge to your employees. I will provide services free of charge to the employees of X Limited. So this person he enters into a contract with X Limited saying that sir for the next one year serving God cannot be directly done. Serving the persons who are producing these puja articles, if we serve those persons it is as good as serving the God. So what I will do is I will provide services free of charge. Morning 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock I will be at hospital. After 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock I will be available exclusively for the employees of X Limited. Anytime your employees can come, they can show their ID cards and they can get free consultation. Is this an office or place of profit? <laughs> is this an office or place of profit? Because 6 to 8 this person is bound to act as per this contract, he is bound to act a for the exclusive, he is bound to serve exclusively for the employees of X Limited. Do you call this as an OPP or this is not to be regarded as an OPP? Friends, point to be understood, any relationship should not be regarded as an office or place of profit. Only where there exists some relationship carrying some remuneration, only those relationships should be considered as an office or place of profit. If we want to give some meaning to the term profit, which means profit is closely associated with the remuneration. So what is that to be understood? The above case will not fall under OPP. It will not fall under OPP because any relationship will not come under OPP. <coughs> Only those relationships which involves remuneration is covered under this particular scenario. So where there is a relationship which does not involve any remuneration, you will not call it as an office or a place of profit. There should be some profit associated with it to call it as an office or place of profit. Let us have few illustrations to understand what is this office or place of profit. <coughs> Number one, Mr. X, he is the son of managing director. <coughs> Mr. X is the son of managing director. X Limited appoints him as an employee. Whether is this an office or place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit. 
He is X Limited is appointing Mr. X as an employee. Who is this employee? This employee is son of the managing director. Is this an office or place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit? Which means you mean to say it may not be. So though you so you could don't call it as an OPP if he is really qualified. So if somebody is qualified, they need not be within the purview of section 314. But still, that is a very very subjective thing. That is a very very subjective thing. There are persons, there are become graduates who are far more intelligent than chartered accountants. So still there are some circumstances where you cannot have this as a foolproof mechanism where, come on, this person is a relative of the managing director, yes or not? Point number one. This person he is acting under the direction, supervision and control of the company, yes or not? Thereby what you call, you call this as an office or a place of profit. X is there, same, X is son of managing director. He is appointed as an agent of X limited. Whether this is an office or place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit. Come on, obviously this is an office or place of profit. Next. Mr. X, father of the managing director, he is not only father of the managing director, he is also an ex-employee of X Limited, thereby X Limited is paying him pension. Every year X Limited is paying him pension. Tell me whether this is an office or place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit. Is this OPP or is this not OPP? This cannot be regarded as an OPP because to call something as an OPP, the appointee or the person who is appointed, he should be under the direction, supervision and the control of the company, yes or no? Where a person is already retired from the company, then what happens? The company cannot direct that person, it cannot control or it cannot supervise that person. You cannot call this as an office or place of profit. Next. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. X, father of managing director, he has given some loan to the company, X Limited, and the company is paying interest on such loans. The company is paying interest on such loans. Tell me whether is this an office or place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit. Come on friends, can this be regarded as an OPP or this cannot be regarded as an OPP? Come on, whether X Limited can direct, control or supervise this person, no, it is not possible. This is not to be regarded as an office or place of profit. Next. Mr. X, brother of the managing director, he purchases or sells goods to X Limited. He is a person who is purchasing or he is selling goods to X Limited. Whether is this an office or a place of profit or this is not an office or place of profit. Friends, point to be understood. Purchase and sale transactions, they are outside the ambit of this office or place of profit. Any purchase or sale transaction, they are outside the ambit of this office or place of profit, which means only service contracts, only contracts which involve services, they fall within the ambit of this office or place of profit. Regular goods dealings, goods transactions, they are outside the ambit of the office or place of profit. So which means from the essence of all the aforementioned illustrations, we can get only one thing. First, there should be some relationship between these two persons. Predominantly, it should be a service based relationship and pursuant to that relationship, the employer should be in a position to supervise, direct or control the employee or the appointee. You call this as an office or a place of profit. Everybody, now, my question is, <coughs> Suppose, Mr. X, he is a lawyer. Mr. X, he is a lawyer. X Limited appoints him to represent in a particular case. Now, who is Mr. X? Mr. X, he is also the brother of managing director. <coughs> <coughs> now,
Now the question is, whether is this to be regarded as an office or place of profit, or this is not to be regarded as an office or place of profit. Now the issue to be discussed is, when there is a lawyer who is appointed by X Limited, which means there is a professional which is appointed by X Limited, he is a professional working under the direction, supervision or control of the company. When a person is appointed as a lawyer, this person he acts in his professional capacity, can you call that this person acts as per the direction, supervision or control of the company? Everybody. You don't call him so. So now what happens where professional services are rendered, you don't call it as an office or a place of profit because professional services are rendered. <coughs> but now the department came out with a clarification. The DCA clarification is where if the professional is appointed on retainer basis, where the professional is appointed on retainership basis, which means what? For all the cases which are referred to this professional, this professional is bound to appear before the court and then he is bound to represent the company, which means where he is appointed on retainership basis, it shall be regarded as an office or place of profit. Professional services which are rendered on retainership basis, professional services which are rendered on retainership basis, other professional services. So where the professional services they are rendered on retainership basis, when you are appointed on retainership basis, you are bound to act as per the directions which are given by the other party. When I say direction, it, is, it may not be a direction as to how to do a particular thing. For example, I am appointed as a doctor in a particular company on a retainership basis. I cannot say he is not directing me what medicine to be given. That direction I am not meaning. But when he is saying from 6 to 8 any of my employee comes, you should see them. I have an obligation. I am bound to act as per the directions of this particular person. Respond friends. So now you call this as an office or place of profit. So where other professional services are there, it is not OPP. Not to be regarded as an office or a place of profit.